Let's install a GPS module on a rack whiz block and configure it for Meshtastic. Now, just a heads up, if you're gonna have your whiz block in a handheld radio like this one and paired to your cell phone at all times, you can actually share your cell phone GPS with the Meshtastic radio, so you don't necessarily have to have a physical um, GPS module installed on the whiz block. So the GPS we'll be installing is the Rack 12500. It costs about $25. It includes an antenna, and this is the module, and this is what it looks like when it's installed on a whiz block. So the GPS module is right there. So technically this is called a GNSS, which stands for Global Navigational Satellite System. But GPS is the American constellation. There are other countries that have their own satellites, which this is compatible. And so this supports GPS, GLONASS, which is the Russian constellation, QZSS, which is the Japanese, and Beidou, which is China. So you have a lot of redundancy with this chip uh, because it can work on any of those constellations. So this GPS kit is about $25. Um, I do sell it on my website. And you can also find it on Rocklin as well. So I'll have links to those in the description. And that's one of the cool things about the WizBlock. It's modular. So it has these different slots that you can plug in different modules to uh, add on functionality. So you can add a GPS, you can add temperature humidity sensor and other uh, types of sensors. Now the other thing you're gonna need is when you buy a Meshtastic starter kit that has the whiz block in it, it includes a bag of screws. You're gonna need one of these really tiny screws right here, just one of them. You'll need a small tipped Phillips head screwdriver. And if you wanna get rid of this little tag, you just need like a pair of small snips to uh, be able to cut that off. So we're gonna be installing the GPS on a 19007 whiz block. There are a few different uh, types of whiz blocks that are compatible with Meshtastic, but the 19007 is the one I use in the Atlavox M1. This is a radio I designed and sell on atlavox.com. And just to note, if you do order a GPS module uh, when you buy the radio, I will install it for you. I'll do all the configurations um, so you don't have to worry about pretty much anything in this video, but it is something you can always add on later. So if you just wanted to get the base unit and then add a module later, you can do that as well. Now, if you purchase multiple radios, I'll also take care of setting up a private encrypted uh, channel for you on the primary channel that will have precise automatic uh, GPS sharing at set intervals. Um, you can set all this stuff up yourself. It's a little cumbersome. I'll, I'll show you how to do that in this video later at the end, um, but Again, if you buy it with the GPS from atlavox.com, I'll take care of all that for you. So to install the GPS, we're gonna install it on the slot A position. So there are multiple slots, A, B. This is the IO slot, and then actually underneath the board, which I can show you right here, you've got slot C and D right here. So for the GPS, you need to install it on the slot A. It'll actually cover up slot B as well. So the GPS has a little connector on the bottom side there. And then there's a little cutout for a screw um, at the top here. So what you do is position it in place, try to align it um, using the white outline on the whiz block. And then you start from one corner, press down, slide your finger across and you'll hear a little snap. Um, so you know that it's snapped in place. Then you'll take one of those screws and just put one screw in the top. Be very careful not to over torque it because you know these are very small threads. Next, you can grab your antenna. If you wanna get rid of the label, you can try to open up the top a little bit, get a pair of pointed scissors, just snip it a little bit like that. And from there, it tears off pretty easily. To install the antenna, you're gonna grab it uh, in your hand like this, hold it at an angle as you approach the connector, then use a fingernail to start putting pressure as you angle it back. And then with both um, fingernails, you can snap it in place and then just wiggle it back and forth to make sure that it's uh, connected. Now, if this is a fresh Meshtastic build for you, you're gonna wanna go to flasher.meshtastic.com to uh, flash the latest firmware. It's really easy to do, but I'll go over that in another video. But to configure the GPS settings, we'll turn the radio on, make sure you've got an antenna uh, installed. I'll go to Bluetooth, I'll tap the available radio. The default Bluetooth code is 123456. 
We'll tap set LoRa region. I'm in the United States. I'll save that. It's gonna do a restart on the radio. And so when you see a long uh, green light on there, that's resetting. As soon as that goes away and starts to blink, we'll reconnect. So it's doing it automatically here and we're good to go. Now by default, when you go to the settings, see this screen here, by default, um, they have position enabled. So if you go to device configuration, position, you'll typically see that device GPS is enabled already by default. So um, you likely won't have to change that, but you do need to confirm that it is enabled. Now I'm gonna do another video just kind of dedicated to mesh-tastic GPS settings and configurations in general. Um, right now, I'm just gonna kind of get you quickly set up without, um, yeah, it looks like we picked up, oh, uh, yeah, that's my prototype. That's actually at my house. We're at my office right now. So this radio picked that up, that's cool. That's the, that's like the original S4 uh, prototype that I still have outside and it's been running flawlessly um, ever since. But there's something else you need to do. So this is kind of the global settings for GPS to enable or disable it and configure the automatic broadcast signal that gets sent to the primary channel slot. And so what we need to do is configure that primary channel slot to be something that's private. That way we're not broadcasting our location to the public channel because the public channel is typically set up with you know new radios. The primary channel is configured uh, with the public channel configuration. Um, that way you can kind of communicate to your local public mesh-tastic network. But for privacy, we don't really wanna be sharing our precise location with that public uh, channel with you know strangers we don't know. So let's go to let's go to channel. So you go back to settings, radio configuration, channels. And so the primary channel slot is the only one that's configured right now. If I tap on it, we can see that it's set up with the public channel information. So the channel name is blank and the key is AQ equal equal. So that's the that's the key that is used um, by anyone on the long fast, you know, modem setting um, to be able to kind of communicate publicly. So I'm gonna make a channel named at Lavox. So I'm gonna overwrite the public channel information and then I'm gonna select a key size, 256. And so it automatically generates a key for us. You can regenerate it if you want. We have positions enabled um, and you can change the precision, so it could be as imprecise as 7.3 miles or uh, within 0.9 miles, or you can check this slider right here for precise location. Now the cool thing about the GPS precision is it's literally reducing the amount of bytes that are sent in a position packet. So by reducing you know, the latitude and longitude data, the bytes that are sent over the network, uh, by nature that reduces the precision uh, that you're, that you're uh, broadcasting. But with a private channel configuration, you can you choose precise location. And by the way, um, Android is slightly different. The web client is slightly different. I'm just showing iPhone. Again, I'm gonna go much more deeper uh, with this in, in a separate video because it gets a little complicated. So I'm gonna save this. And then if I still wanted to be able to communicate on the public channel, I would tap add channel. I'm gonna leave the channel name blank. I'm going to select default, which is, you can see the key gets generated A, Q, equal, equal. It's gonna be configured as a secondary channel because we already have the primary channel configured. And we can disable position requests altogether so we can remain anonymous on uh, that uh, public channel. And we'll click save. And there's one more thing we have to do. You go back to settings and you tap under radio configuration, go to LoRa. We are gonna make sure we're on the long range fast. So long fast uh, modem preset and the frequency slot. So again, this gets complicated. I'm not gonna explain it in this video. I don't fully understand it. You need to change this to 20 if you're in the US. 
So actually, so you can kind of see right here, if it's set to zero, the value will be calculated automatically based on the primary channel name. So the actual name that's used for the primary channel uh, has an effect on the frequency slot, which honestly, I don't even know what that does. I have to still kind of research it. Um, but because we changed that primary channel name to something different, a custom one, it now screws that up. So we have to manually override it by putting in 20. There's a chart, depending on your location on the MeshTastic website, I'll show it on screen here. Uh, but if you're in the US, that frequency slot should be 20 because we changed the name of the primary channel. I told you this gets convoluted. <laughs> so um, this really does need a separate video to fully kind of explain all this stuff. So I'm gonna tap save here, save configuration, and we're doing a, a reboot again. So we're gonna look for that long um, green light. So there's that long green light. So we know it's, it's uh, rebooting right now. I'll go back to my Bluetooth here. And so now we can see we're reconnecting automatically. And that's it. So now we've got the radio configured with a private channel in the primary channel slot. That is gonna enable this radio to send regular GPS uh, position updates to that channel so all of our friends who are using that same channel will be able to just open up the app, go to the mesh map, and instantly uh, be able to see where we are um, in real time, depending on the interval that you configure to transmit um, that, those position packets. And since we set up a secondary channel with the public channel information, we can still communicate um, to the public uh, channel, the, the local, you know, the local network. So I'm gonna tap on that channel here and we'll send a test message and see if maybe the, uh, the Atlavox S4 or that prototype picks it up. So that didn't work because, so I'm inside, let me try that again. I'm gonna hold this up and see if maybe that worked. Okay, so. <laughs> I just had to hold the radio up a little bit. I'm inside, so I'm kind of surprised that I even picked it up. And what's interesting is um, Four Winds Farm Repeater, that's the radio that's on the, on the roof of my house uh, with, you know, I got a pretty nice antenna up on the top there. So, and we can see the iPhone app shows what channel we share uh, with the nodes on our node list. Now, in addition to the automatic broadcasting of position to you know, the specified channel, you can also manually send a position packet uh, to a particular node depending upon the permissions that you've provided for the channel that you share with that node. Does that make sense? So we can long press on a node, tap exchange positions, and it'll send a request to get that node's position and send our position to that node so it'll update it on the mesh map. All right, so that's how you install a Rack 12500 GPS module on a WizBlock. I actually have them right here. If you wanna buy one, you can go to atlavox.com. Um, I've got a bunch in this bin right here. They're about $25. Uh, if I'm out of stock or whatever, I would definitely check out Rockland as well. I'll have a link to their uh, website below as well. They're one of my uh, suppliers. They're they're awesome people. They've been they've been really helping me out, kind of getting Atlavox off the ground. And if you want to buy an M1, I'll take care of all of this configuration for you. I actually have uh, some custom software that I've developed to kind of help me quickly configure multiple radios. I'll even pair. You know, I'll create a custom channel to share between radios, which I didn't even tell you how to share there's i gotta do this in another video you can you can share a qr code from your phone um, to a friend and they can scan it and it'll configure your channels for them so easy way to kind of share uh, channels but i'm going to save that for another video um, that's going to do it for this one thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one